What's up guys, today under Lifestyle we're gonna finish up the rooftop tent rack on my tow pig. If you watched the last episode of this rack build, we built the rack from scratch. I had some unique requirements as I wanted to still have access to my gang box in the bed, so I built a hinge and latch system in order to raise the tent out of the way whenever I need to. Now I have a rack painted and some struts installed in order to assist raising the tent. I completed a little bit of work since the last video, but you guys didn't miss much. I added a rear panel so I could mount a third reverse light, and I welded on a couple tabs in order to mount these gas struts. These universal struts are rated at 150 pounds a piece and can be found on Amazon. The paint is just spray on Rust-Oleum bed liner that I got from Home Depot. It's relatively inexpensive and it covers somewhat decent. It's not very durable, so long term, I plan on either powder coating this or using a real bed liner. But between now and then, I think I'm probably gonna be adding and subtracting things to this rack over time. And I wanna make sure that I solidify a design that is functional before I put a coating on it that's difficult to remove. Today we're gonna to mount a third battery, we're gonna mount some extra lighting, we're gonna mount some extra power sources, and the reason for doing all of this work is that whenever I take this truck off-road, well actually really, whenever I take my Jeep or my Rover or anything off-road and I'm towing it with this truck, I wanna make sure that I have a comfortable place to stay that's very functional and just maximize the comfort and make this feel kind of like a home away from home. Now, everything you're gonna see today, all of this accessories, all the wiring, all this stuff can be had on Amazon, and I will include every single thing you see here, even some of the tools, in an Amazon shopping cart in the description. I wanna start this project by knocking out the low-hanging fruit. I'm gonna use some battery cleaner and clean this old battery up, and I'm gonna mount it into the toolbox. I like deep cycle marine batteries for this kind of thing because it has these little 3-8 studs on top that make it super easy to add accessories to the battery. We're gonna experiment with a little bit of wiring today and tying this into the main system. So hopefully it will slowly trickle charge every time I use the truck and then it won't drain the main batteries whenever the truck is off. I have three separate relay systems that I'm gonna tie into this rear battery. One is going to be for all the lights. So we've got a light system here. We've got some lights here. Um, I'll probably use, I don't know, two or three of these guys and then all of these guys. So we'll have like 10 or 11 lights to hook up and those will all be hooked up through this relay. This is gonna be hooked up on a switch that I'm probably gonna locate somewhere on the gang box. Then we're gonna have a system that is gonna be just for the reverse lights. So I'm gonna tie this relay to the reverse lights as a trigger to turn the relay on and then use the power from this rear battery to then turn on the rear light. Then we have one heavy duty relay system and all of these are just their LED light bar type of, of lights. It comes with everything you need to hook up a light bar, but I like to buy relays in this fashion because everything's pre-done, they're relatively inexpensive and I don't have to go through and crimp every single fitting and every single, I guess not fitting, every single wire connection. So this is a 12 gauge and what this is gonna do is I'm gonna try to figure out a way to use the charging system off the truck to charge this rear um, battery whenever I key on the truck. So whenever the truck is on and running, it will use energy through these wires to then charge the rear battery. I've never seen this done before, but it makes sense to me that this could work. So instead of using a battery isolator, which is what you would normally use for something like this, I decided to go cheap. You know, this is 15 or 18 bucks, somewhere in there. And I'm 99% sure I can make this work by using the ignition as a trigger for the relay to then connect the charge system to the rear battery. So we'll see once we get to that point. But right now, I'm gonna start going through these different relay systems and kind of, I'm gonna open them up, I'm gonna spread them out, and I'm gonna figure out exactly how I need to route each wire. Again, this first harness that we're messing with is the one that we're gonna connect the rear battery to the front battery. I pulled the battery back out of the back here because it's just gonna make it so much easier for me to figure out how to hook this up. I don't exactly know how to hook this up, but I know that with a power probe, I can very easily figure out how to hook this up. So the power probe is hooked up positive, negative, and now it will tell me what is positive and what is negative. So the way this relay and everything is hooked up right now, this wire that used to go to what was supposed to be lights, has no charge, 
But if we plug, let's see here, if we plug our switch back in and we turn the switch on, oh, switch is already turned on, this will have a charge. So the way I want to hook this up is to where this switch is now going to be the ignition switch in the cab. So I need to figure out exactly which ones of these wires are going to need to get energized in order for me to get the relay to turn on. Um, I can put a positive or a negative charge into the relay in order to uh, you know, troubleshoot and figure out where exactly I need power. But I'm gonna go through and give these all a positive charge and just see what happens here. Nothing. That's making. So that is energizing the relay whenever I give a positive charge to the center. I'm gonna get rid of these two outside wires and we're going to wire in this blue wire into our ignition system so whenever I key it on, the front battery, which, sorry, the rear battery, which you can see is connected here, will then be connected to the front battery. All I'm gonna do is put a connector on the front here. This is going to get bolted on to the house battery to make sure that every time this gets energized, this is gonna be seeing 14.4 volts from the alternator. The next harness I wanna to put together is gonna to be for the bed lights. I wanna make sure that I have a very easy to find switch that I can click on, it illuminates the entire bed, and then if it's, you know, I'm getting ready for bed when I'm camping or something like that, I can flip that bad boy on, I can uh, get my stuff to brush my teeth or whatever, some water that I can bring up into the tent with me, and I can see exactly what I'm doing because I've got lights placed all over the bed. So this harness is just the same kind of harness as the last one, it's just a little bit smaller gauge wire because it doesn't need to be so heavy duty because it's just powering a whole bunch of very small LEDs. This harness is, it's just a super generic universal harness. If you want to find harnesses like this, you can just type in like off-road lighting harness and they all come pre-set up like this. It's pretty slick. They're relatively inexpensive. You have everything you need to get started here and then you can just mod it for whatever your needs are. I'm setting this up to the battery just to make sure that when I turn on this switch, we can hear the relay click and we have power to these ends. Before I invest a bunch of time in installing this, I wanna confirm that everything works. I imagine it does, but it doesn't hurt to try it out. Okay, I hear the relay clicking, which is a good sign. And now I can use the power probe to test and make sure that we are actually getting power to where we're supposed to be. So, negative, nothing. Now when I click it on, Perfect. So this is all functioning and this is gonna be super straightforward. I'm gonna have two different zones of LED lighting and I'm just gonna take advantage of the fact that, they ha that these ends are already on here. So um, one zone of lighting is gonna be onto one of these and then the other zone of lighting, which is just gonna be these jammies, is gonna be on the other one. Extremely simple. This is gonna be for lights. And I'm gonna put this on the harness. So as I'm hooking everything up and I'm routing everything, I can keep in mind which one is supposed to go where. This last harness is gonna be for the reverse lights and I barely have to mod it. It's gonna be set up very similar to how the charge harness is set up in the fact that I'm just gonna modify this switch to be triggered by something else other than the switch. Um, it looks like it's different colors than the first harness we took apart, so we're gonna have to go through the same process I'm just gonna hook up the power probe. I'm gonna see which, what powers what with the power probe, and then I can trim everything else out that I don't need. With just a little bit of testing, I was able to confirm that when this white one gets power, it actuates the relay. You can hear it click, and if we go to here, So no, this is definitely the one we want. I'm gonna wire this up to the reverse light that is in the OEM wire harness of the truck. And then whenever I click it into reverse, it is gonna energize this harness. And then the light on the back of this rack is gonna get energized and make it a little bit brighter whenever I'm trying to back up. 
The next system I wanna hook up is just some power. I wanna have three power ports back there just cause it gives me some availability to hook something up in the uh, rooftop tent. I can hook up something to charge in the bed or if I wanna inflate a mattress, whatever. I wanna have multiple power ports in order to be able to do that. This has a fuse style that I don't like. This doesn't need a relay or anything like that, but it does need a fuse. So I'm gonna trim out this fuse that it came with and I'm gonna install one of these bad boys so I can use a traditional, let's see, a traditional fuse like this, like you see in most uh, automotive stuff these days. So these, again, it's just another Amazon thing. I'll buy these in a 10 pack. I keep them in the drawer and then anytime I need it, because I never plan to need it, but whenever I do need it, I have one that I can just pull out of there and I can solder in line. So first, I'm gonna trim this out. I'm gonna solder some extensions so I know that I can reach from wherever I mount this to the battery. And then once I get that figured out, I can cut and sweat this in line. There are two primary methods used to solder wires together. One would be a soldering iron. The other one is a torch. I myself am a torch guy. It's very fast, it's very simple, and I'm very comfortable with the torch because I was a plumber for 15 years and soldering things with a torch is something that I used to do to make a living. After I twist the wires together, I like to give it a couple drops of flux because flux really helps the solder get deep into the joint. The flux starts to boil, the solder follows the flux into the joint, and then whenever it cools, you have a really solid connection that's very strong. I then like to double up on the heat shrink. I put a little bit of heat shrink right over the joint on each one of these wires and then I throw another piece that goes over those two to make sure there's no chafing. Now I've got to drill a couple holes in order to make it to where I can pass some wires out of the box into the, the back of the bed and then through the bed down below the bed and I'm gonna have a couple wires that are gonna be running up front under the cab there. So this grommet is what came with the rigid box. I'm gonna use a Christmas tree bit and just drill it out to the size that I need to pass the wires through. And then this is a grommet that I'm gonna use to pass through the bed. So I'm gonna drill an inch and a half hole. It looks to me like an inch and a half hole, so it should be just about perfect. And then this top ridge right here should fit perfectly inside that hole and give an extra layer of protection to keep any chafing or anything like that from happening with the wire. apologize ahead of time for the audio. I know that talking into a steel box is not gonna yield good audio here, folks, but uh, bear with me. So I've got all the wiring pretty much wrapped up. Uh, I will have to add a power and a ground for the uh, those little power, that power bank thing, but I'll do that here in a little bit. But for now, I've got all the relays mounted. I have everything tied into where it needs to go. I even have a switch up here and I put it underneath this overhang to kind of keep it out of the weather. And this is gonna be the switch that I hit in order to turn on any of the truck bed lighting. I'm about to put up a ton of work in a really short time period. So before we get to that, I wanna go over just a couple quick things. I know I'm gonna be getting questions about this uh, braided insulation. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to focus on that. Let's just look at the roll. This stuff is, it's more Amazon stuff. I've been using it for years. You can get a whole bunch of different sizes of it. I'm a big fan of this because it's really durable. It's actually kind of hard to cut even with scissors. And I just think that this is a really nice option to clean up your wiring and give it another layer of protection against chafing or anything like that. The next thing I wanna talk about is lighting. I got some weird lights here. I, I wanted to experiment with these because they just looked cool when I looked at them online. They come like in a, a string of lights and I was thinking I would mount them underneath the bed rails, but I don't have a great mounting solution. I don't trust that this double stick tape is going to last with, you know, years of lots of dust and dirt and stuff and water getting up underneath there. So I've changed my mind on how I'm going to do this. I'm gonna use all of my dome lights that I have, that's what I call these. I'm gonna screw these into the rack itself and then that double stick tape, I'm gonna take four of those lights and put them right up here on the inside of this rim. I'm gonna peel the back, I'm gonna stick them in there 
And then whenever I flip this switch, if I have this open, it'll illuminate the inside of the box. Initially, I my plan was to put a dome light right above the box there, but I kind of like the idea of having four really bright lights on the lid. So there's no right way to do this, right? It's just a lot of experimentation. And now I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna mount all my lights, I'm gonna solder a whole bunch of wire together and, and bring everything out to where it can be connected to this main harness. Got all the lights hooked up. I have a number of things that went right and a number of things that went wrong. Let's go over it. So what the rest of this is gonna be a step-by-step -step process. I didn't wanna do a step-by-step -step process on how to zip tie wire out of the way and how I hooked up these lights. These lights are hooked up exactly how you would hook up a light bar or off-road lights or anything like that. This switch would be normally attached to your dash and these lights would normally be a light bar or some off-road lights bolted to the bumper. This is wired identically, so I didn't want to go too crazy on showing that. As you can see, I've got everything insulated really well, zip-tied out of the way, and I tried to keep everything neat. I tucked the wiring behind this plastic bed liner, so it's, uh, it's insulated behind here, and then it goes down right there, and you can see some zip ties and whatnot down there. So I tried to keep it all as neat as I could. So that went right. What went wrong is I wanted to hook up the reverse light and the whole concept to me was that I was gonna run that wire up into the light and then it would be real easy to access the point that I have it tied in. But I broke my tailgate today. So I can't open the tailgate, which means I can't get to those wires because there's screws that go on the inside here to pull it out. What you're gonna see in the future is me build a tailgate from scratch. Um, now I'm gonna have to do that sooner than later because I can't open this tailgate. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna mess with it. The insides of this thing are so rusty and nasty. I'm just gonna take a sawzall, cut this thing in half, pull it off, and then uh, this is gonna be a tire, gear, a tire carrier slash tailgate that you'll see in the future. But for today, we are gonna do a step-by-step -step process on how I plan on routing this wire to the battery and how I'm gonna test to figure out what to tie into. I wanna make sure I'm being super clear on how I'm hooking this up so you guys can understand why I think this would work without an isolator. So, let's look at it like it's plumbing. I only have one plumbing symbol in this whole drawing and it's that one right there. I use that symbol because if you, would, if you visualize this as a gate valve, it makes it a little bit easier to understand what it is that I'm doing. If we have a full battery on the truck and it's at 12.9 volts, and we just hooked it up without this valve to a battery that's less, it's like 12.1, if it's just a different brand battery, if it's an older battery or a newer battery, whatever, it will run both of these batteries completely dead. Whenever you hook up two batteries together, you want them both to be like the same manufacturer, that made on almost the same date. Um, otherwise, they tend to kill each other. So we're gonna have this gate valve, essentially, it's a relay. We're gonna have a gate valve that's gonna be turned off whenever the car's just sitting there, whenever the truck's just sitting there. Then, whenever we key on the ignition, it is going to open this up, and these two batteries are gonna try to equalize. If you think of it like air, let's say that this is an air tank that's empty, this is an air tank that's at 50 PSI, if you open up a gate valve between the two, they're gonna equalize. They'll probably end up at 25 PSI, I don't know. I didn't do any math, I just kinda come thinking off the cuff here. So if the alternator is a compressor, and the alternator senses that this front battery, or if this front tank was uh, empty, or if it was low, it's gonna pump it back up. And whenever this valve is open, it's gonna pump both of them back up. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Whenever the vehicle is running, and we use the ignition to open up this valve, it's gonna make it to where both of these batteries are now connected in the same system. Whenever this alternator is running at 14.4 volts and it's trying to top off this front battery, as long as our ignition is on, which it has to be for it to be running, 
this will be open and it'll be charging both batteries. Then whenever the vehicle is turned off, it's gonna close this valve, then isolating these two systems again. So if I run the rear battery really low while I'm camping, it's a deep cycle battery, but you can kill anything. Um, it's not going to kill the house batteries. It's not gonna kill the two batteries that are on the truck in its stock system. And then whenever I fire the truck up, it's gonna slowly start trickle charging this rear battery. And I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work. This is experimental. I've never seen this done before. And worst case scenario, if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna use an isolator like everyone else. But I do think this is gonna work. I've played around a lot with uh, 12 volt electrical over the years. And um, in either case, I will definitely let you guys know exactly how this turns out. I use some of that braided insulation to cover both wires from the back all the way to the front to give it an extra layer of protection, make sure nothing wears through. And then this thin one is gonna be for the ignition. This thick one is gonna be the one that goes between the two batteries. The thick one is 12 gauge. I think the thin one is like 18 or something like that. So what I need to do now is I'm just kind of mocking up where I wanna solder this uh, connector. I have a connector that I'm gonna probably bolt in right here on the battery. And so I'm gonna cut this to where it looks like it's gonna fit. I have a little bit of wiggle room. And then I'm gonna pull this back out. I'm going to uh, solder it on my vise. And then I think I'm just gonna solder the joint that I need for the ignition uh, based on a special tap that I have laying around. And I'll show you guys that tap here in just a second. When I'm working with this braided insulation, I heat up anything that's just, you know, all wild and fraying on the ends. I just heat it up with a torch. It starts to catch on fire and I just kind of put it out with my fingers real quick. Yeah, that's not the safe way to do it. Um, you could probably burn yourself. <laughs> but I have been doing it this way for years and I don't know, it works really well for me. And so like with these joints that are inside of uh, this heat shrink, I heat it up and then I just kind of put it out and I just, it's, it's a bunch of hot plastic and whenever it cools, it all cools together hard and then I put the heat shrink over it, and now I've got this super solid joint. So it, that way has worked really well for me. Um, now I need to just go hook this up to the battery and we can figure out a good ignition source. Now we are gonna hook up the power probe and we're gonna find a place to install this. This is it's like a little tap, basically, where you can tap into an existing fuse. It has a place for the existing fuse, and it has the new fuse right here, which this is going to be a five amp fuse, which should be plenty for our, uh, just you know something that's just a trigger essentially. So we're going to use the power probe to find one of these fuses that turns on whenever we turn on the key. And then we can plug this bad boy in place of the old fuse put the old fuse in here because again, this does continue that fusible link, but it piles on another fusible link on top of it. And then we can tie this into the rear trigger for that relay. Sunroof, seatbelt tensioner. This one is cigarette lighter. This must be the cigarette lighter that comes on whenever I turn the key on. So right now we've got nothing, nothing, nothing. Now I'm gonna go key it on and we'll test it again. Perfect. This is for our cigarette lighter. We can put the cigarette lighter fuse right here. Put that back where it goes. I just need to match this up with this and we have our ignition point. Off the top of my head, I don't remember exactly what these are called, but I will look it up and I will put it, I'll put it in the bottom right here. Ring. <laughs> You'll see a little thing illuminate that'll uh, show you what these are called. But this is just, it's a, a style of just crimp connector that you use this special tool and uh, you start, I start at A, go to B, go to C, D, E, and it just crimps it down a little bit smaller every time 
and then it gives you a really nice crimp. I'm a big fan of soldering, but anytime I have a connection that I need to crimp, I do have the right tools to do it. This is gonna be kinda hard to see. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Okay, it crimps it down into itself and it makes it really nice tight crimp. I'm a big fan of these. I really like this method. And then uh, th these two little guys on the back, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Go A, B, C, D, E. All right, now we're gonna put our insulation over the end. Let me give it a little bit of a melty melt. We have a nice insulated wire. This will plug right into that. And we have a double insulated wire. So it's gonna slide over our other insulation. All of these little steps might seem like overkill. It might be overkill to insulate this wire, but I always like to make sure that everything is protected and I don't have mystery electrical gremlins when it comes to like something rubbing raw and uh, grounding out somewhere. So I think that this kind of thing is well worth it. All right, now it's time to see if our labor is gonna pay off. We are at 12.8. I'm gonna go key it on and see if that 12.8 changes um, to a different number just out of experimentation. My theory is that it'll drop. Let's see what it says. 12.6, so it definitely dropped. Um, I'm gonna fire up the truck real quick. We're gonna see if this goes to 14.4. Let's see if I can get you to see that. Saw that coming. What are we at? Oh, 14.38. Let's see, can you see that? Yes, you can. So, the alternator is charging the rear battery and the front battery right now. Hopefully you guys can hear this. I just remembered there's one thing we have not checked yet. We do know that our charge system works, we do know that our lights work, but I have not checked our little power port back here. I've got this little flashlight that uh, whenever it's charging, it illuminates blue. There we go. You see the little blue flashlight up there. So this is charging. We do have power back here. Uh, there's a fusible link right before the battery. Uh, per, as far as I can tell, all the systems are working. Now there's one thing you guys have not seen yet, and that is this top closed. Let me close this guy. And which I just want you to see how much force I'm using. Let's see, whoa, yeah. And there it is. It's pretty sweet. I think that it turned out, you know, halfway decent. A lot of people would criticize, um, and a lot of people have criticized, a lot of the things that I build in here. But I build this stuff the way that I like it. I build it for my functionality. I build it in a way that suits my purpose. And I think that even if you don't understand why I wanted to hinge this in the front or you don't understand why I would want to keep my job box, I hope you can at least understand that I'm out here just being creative and building things that are going to work really well for me in the field. of our labor finally get a rooftop tent on the old pickup truck this is a tent I'm gonna get a bunch of questions about it from a company called Ghana equipment I think this is like a Wanaka 64 I am not South African so I did not know how to like pronounce those words but it is plenty big in here <laughs> so I am going to take some time and figure out how to set this up and I will be doing a review video of this on my review channel so uh, this is the end of the road for this video. I'm really happy with the way this turned out, but the truth is it's not done. The I try to pack as much development of ideas and stuff into each video as I can, but it is, it's just impossible to make all the ideas happen at once and you get it all done in one shot. At least it is for me. So there's still gonna be some things that I'm gonna add to this system. I want to anchor down that battery. Um, I want to put a lid on that battery tray and those are both not that big of a deal. I want to build some sort of like a finishing piece 
that's gonna basically bolt into that corner of the gang box to keep all of my gear off of it. Probably out of aluminum, probably some dimple die action. So this is just one of those things where your ideas will develop over time. That's definitely how it works for me. And I'm very excited to at least be this far. I'm at least at a point where I can use it and it's an idea that I can go and uh, enjoy and I can camp with. And as I'm camping, I can think of how to improve it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I like to build stuff like this. Um, there's everything from engine building to uh, wheeling and having fun outside. So if you're into that kind of thing, definitely stick around. If you've ever learned anything from any of my videos, consider heading over to thedirtlifestyle.com, pick up a t-shirt or a sticker. We have neck gaiters. Um, or if you're feeling generous, you can go and donate on our Patreon account there as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.